Hello, and welcome to Studio 420 at the Father Ryan Arts Center of Focus on Renewal. I'm your host, Jim Critchfield, and the program director at the Arts Center, and I want to invite you to explore the many opportunities we have waiting for you from theater, music, and dance to visual arts and many other creative arts. The Father Ryan Arts Center, located in the heart of McKee's Rocks, only minutes from Moon Township, serves the entire region of the Western Allegheny County region. And the people who want to explore their artistic development through classes, workshops, and performances. The Father Ryan Arts Center's mission is to inspire, empower, and enlighten through the arts, which we accomplish through providing professional, high quality instruction and performances. We also have a beautiful state-of-the-art theater and a wonderful lobby cafe area for parties, meetings, events of all kinds. You can learn more about the Father Ryan Arts Center by visiting our website at www.fatherryanartscenter.org or call 412-771-3052. And now, on with the show. Director of Focus on Renewal, our parent company at the Father Ryan Arts Center. Father Don has been sharing his enthusiasm with pottery ever since we opened the doors at the Arts Center in October 2008. And now, Father Don Fisher. Thank you, James. You're welcome, Father. And hello, everyone. It's a privilege to be working with this marvelous material. Uh, and there's a, a, a unique uh, fascination with uh, the potter's wheel, which is only, of course, one way of working with clay. But I was first fascinated uh, by it at the Three Rivers Arts Festival. I think it was back in 1965 or something like that. And I have been um, working with play uh, ever since because I said, I think I have to try that and uh, cut the bug. So I'd like to show you a few things on the wheel, some simple things. The clay that we get, of course, could be dug right from the ground, but with the way we get it here, it's uh, already processed in 25 pound packages like this. Usually uh, I would take a large piece and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about this later but uh, try to keep a kind of uh, cone form a uh, pyramidal form here and uh, put a little convex bottom on it to affix it to the wheel of course when you try to make a piece like this taken from a piece like this you have to wedge it somewhat like preparing bread, homemade bread to be made. It's called a wedging. And I put that on the wheel and fix it to the wheel uh, with a good seal so that it doesn't come off. And you're ready to go. Uh, there are various forms that one could make. Once it is fixed, And uh, usually people start off with a simple form like a cup or a bowl. And since I have this already on the wheel, uh, I'll show you just by using a piece from the top, uh, a cup. This is called centering. Pretty much like our lives. Until you get them centered, you can't move forward very well or as well as you would like. A lot of production potters that want to make many pieces, for example, many cups or many bowls, will uh, use this method of throwing a smaller piece off the larger piece because it uh, saves the time that each little piece doesn't have to be centered in you. 
Uh, first there's the centering and you can see the difference that the top piece is centered. And you can feel it in your hands, no more wobble like that. The centered piece, no wobbles, no gyrations, and you just mark off about as much clay as you think you will need. The piece has been centered and next is the opening with lubrication. The opening of the piece, the pulling up of the piece, the basic shaping of the piece, make sure it doesn't get out of control, the pulling up of the piece, Pretty much like developing, once you get a good foundation, then you can begin to develop just like a personality. You can uh, put uh, some final touches to it. Uh, and take the joy of, letting, uh, of seeing it take shape. by perhaps finishing the edge with a little piece of soft cloth. In this case, it's a chamois. Uh, by putting some distinctive marks on it, um, just like we do with our own lives, we develop our own unique ways. So, to the clay, whence we all came, a little distinctive mark of any kind. Anything you do while the wheel is spinning will be everywhere. And so, and maybe another little special touch. And uh, maybe a few more little distinctive marks. And uh, you have a cup. And from that hump, so to speak, you could develop probably five or six more cups. Uh, in this case, I will just take it off the wheel. And um, once it uh, gets to be leather hard by drying in the open air for a while, uh, you could then affix a handle later. This larger piece still needs to be centered and by centering you continue basically to not let the clay push you around by having your hand stopping its motion here and this hand guiding its motion here, the hands working as a team and pulling up to that pyramidal shape again, which at the same time is pushing all those clay particles more closely together and compacting them. So it's a question of coming up and going back down again, using the momentum of the wheel to help. If I do it with one hand, you might even get an idea that it basically will help in the center. Once it is centered, uh, you could judge that a piece like that always a little bit of lubrication. I think in the beginning potters will overdo the lubrication and uh, as they 
develop over the years, you learn to do it with less and less water. The centering, I think even by looking at it, you can see that it's smooth, not pushing my hands around just when by touching it, and fairly centered. Next would come, just like in the cup, the opening. Just like after a firm foundation in our own lives, we begin to open up to the world. So in the development of this piece of clay, too. The opening is important. I'd use a little bit of pressure and press all the way down almost to the bottom. Because you have to have a bottom. You have a firm foundation. Next, the formation of the bottom. And a corresponding judgment as to how wide you want it to be at the bottom by judging how wide the inside should be. Once you make an estimate of that, you can begin this, what I call magical process of pulling it up, which most people are quite amazed at, and I think which first caught my eye years ago done at the Three Rivers Arts Festival back in the 60s. And the pulling up would be done something like this, with your hands working as a team, this one on the inside and this one on the outside and the clay in the middle, and rhythmically and evenly pulling up. If holding your breath would help, do it. That is until you can't hold your breath anymore. Back to that somewhat pyramidal shape again. Because clay, as you pull it up, has a tendency to move outward, and so the pyramidal shape compensates for that. And then, just like it was when we were growing up, you need some trimming and some control and some shaping. A little more fine tuning and then just as it happened when we were growing up, sometimes you need a little bit of curtailing like this rim seems to be uneven and throwing it off balance, so we'll trim it up. And you'll see the difference immediately. It's still pretty thick. It takes time and practice, although some, of course, are better at it than others and pick it up more quickly. It takes time and practice to judge the uh, thickness of the piece and to both center and pull up. But I think this is thick enough that we could go further. At this point, you can begin to do some final shaping. Uh, 
uh, you know, I've been making these analogies with the human experience. People have been doing it for a lot longer than I have, in fact, although you don't always refer to it, this lower part is called the foot area, and this center part is called the belly of the pot, actually, by most potters, if they want to refer to it, and this is called the shoulder, and this could very well be called the neck and the collar. I think that'll become more evident as I begin to do some final shaping. I'm starting at the foot. I'm pulling this belly of the pot out. I'm coming back in at the shoulder. And I'm beginning to develop the neck. and the color. So there's a basic uh, process um, in doing both small and larger things. Relatively few number of uh, equipment pieces. A little more lubrication. I'll give you an example of what it might mean to do a little more trimming of this base at the bottom, a little more pushing out of the form, and a little more of what they call collaring. which makes the clay thicker, which allows you to play with it a little more. And trim. I'm rushing the process, of course but do a little um, finishing touch here at the rim. Uh, make some distinctive marks um, from inside, for example, by putting a few handles on. become more and more spontaneous as you get experience. Had I wanted to make that a picture instead of a vase, I might have determined that beforehand. And if I wanted to make it a picture, And then later we would allow that to dry, to be leather hard, and then put a handle on it. I'm going to show you one more form that we, here at the center we've begun to uh, experiment with, and that is a combination of wheel work and slab work. And uh, it will take a few moments. But in the meantime, I will just use a simple wire tool and cut that right off the face. Um, once it does get leather hard, I would actually turn it upside down, put it back on the wheel head, and begin to trim the bottom. that I wanted to show you that we've been experimenting with
talking so much, more doing. By the way, if anyone would like to try the pottery working uh, on their own, uh, there are classes of all kinds here at the center. Call 412-771-3052. We have classes for children, classes for adults, special workshops. For adults and young people. And what we have been trying is that you might make a piece. that is a little more flatter uh, and lower than what we have been discussing. Something like that. Taking a tool of some kind of your choice, just about anything, making some distinctive marks or faceting while the wheel is going. For example, and dig in a little bit. And then we would let that dry a little bit. Okay, I won't let it dry, but we would let it dry and take it off the wheel. And go on to a flat surface, something like this. Maybe larger, but in this case, it'll be enough. Take it off the wheel. This decoration. And begin to Throw it down onto that uh, a surface uh, with a diagonal motion which allows the clay particles to spread. A combination of slab work and wheel work. If it's drier, you'd have more control. Part, just to give you an idea of some of the possibilities and begin to develop a platter form. Trim it up, put some handles on it later. That, and I think we're finishing up, are we not? Good being with you. I think uh, that's all that uh, we have time for today, but uh, I would encourage you, if you have the slightest bit of interest, to contact the center and uh, touch this magical material for yourself and uh, see what happens. It's like meeting a brand new friend. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye right now for a while, and uh, don't forget to clean up. Thank you.